Back when my channel was still fairly new, I covered Adventures of Lolo for the NES. If you aren't familiar with that game, it's a top-down adventure puzzle game where you control Lolo, a little blue dude that a lot of people will remember from the Kirby games, on his quest to defeat King Egger and save his pal Lala. I played this game a lot as a kid, and only really as a rental, and didn't completely beat it until I covered it for the channel. It's a pretty good game, and I do recommend it if you like puzzle games. I briefly mentioned in that video that the Lolo series is actually part of a larger series called Eggerland in Japan. There are actually four games that were released prior to Adventures of Lolo. The Eggerland games were released on the MSX and Famicom systems. Adventures of Lolo and Lolo 2 both use puzzles from the previous games. I haven't personally played these games yet, but I think I'm going to tackle them eventually. I like Lolo games, they're fun little brain teasers. Anyway. Adventures of Lolo 2 was released in 1990 in both Japan and the United States. And if you played the first game, you'd take one look at it and say, this is the same game. In Adventures of Lolo 2, you control Lolo through 50 stages across 10 floors, solving puzzles that allow you to open a chest to reveal a jewel that opens a door to the next puzzle or a staircase that takes you to the next floor. To solve a puzzle, you must collect all these little heart tokens which are actually called heart framers, that open a chest. But you gotta do it without getting killed by the numerous monsters and hazards that block your path. To prevent yourself from being killed, you push around these green blocks, called emerald framers, which allow you to block off enemies or disrupt their line of sight so they can't instantly demolish you. The thing is, there are very few differences between Lolo 1 and Lolo 2. They both have the very same objective in each puzzle. The puzzles are always laid out differently, but there are no new enemies and very few new features. You can still obtain a few different powers when collecting heart framers, like the magic shot that allows Lolo to turn enemies into an egg. The egg can be pushed into the way of other enemies that have projectile weapons to block them, or even be pushed into the water to ride them like a raft. The snaky enemies are usually an indication that you'll be using magic shots to push them around, but other enemies will need to be egged up from time to time as well. You can also enable a bridge power that allows Lolo to create a bridge to cross over watery and lava areas. There's a one-way pass power that allows you to change the direction of one-way blocks so you can pass through them easier. Puzzles involving these seem to be the trickiest for me. And finally, there's a hammer that allows you to break one rock tile so you can pass through. Before each level starts, you can take a second to get your bearings and look at the board before anything moves. As soon as you move, the room springs to life around you. Some enemies will kill you on touch, others may fall asleep in front of you or push you into a corner, blocking your path. And others will just shoot you dead where you stand. Getting around these guys and blocking them so you don't die is the real challenge, and it's always fun to figure out how to get through the stage unscathed. If you block yourself into a dead end and you can't continue, just hit the select button to murder poor Lolo yourself. One big problem with this game, however, is that there are a few puzzles where you have to kill an enemy by turning it into an egg and blowing it away, then pushing a block onto its respawn point so it respawns in a completely different location. I had no idea how this mechanic worked, and I had to look online for a solution. After figuring it out by watching that video, I looked online for a manual scan for, you know, the instructions to see if they had any indication that this was a thing. And no, no, it, it doesn't say anything in the instructions about moving a block over a dead enemy space to move it. How the hell are you supposed to know to do this? If you decide to play the game yourself, just know that this is a mechanic that happens. So if you're stumped, try killing an enemy, then putting a block on its respawn point to see if it will reappear somewhere helpful. I don't know, it's a dumb game design. I'll bet that this was mentioned in the Japanese game manual and it just didn't make it over in translation or something. Who knows? Other than that one big hiccup, I really do like this game. Sure, it looks exactly like the first game, other than a few minor graphical upgrades, but you can compare it to like a crossword puzzle or Sudoku or something. You know, it's a puzzle that you can get more of by buying a new book or something, but the gameplay never changes between puzzle books. I mean, you're spending more money on a video game than a puzzle book, but I think you understand what I'm trying to say. Also, mute the game unless you want a repetitive track stuck in your head for days because there are no other musical numbers here. It's just the same song over and over. 
It's not a bad song, but it gets old fast. Put on that album you've been meaning to listen to when you play this instead. The sound cues in this game aren't super important, so whatever. So yeah, Lolo 2 is a pretty fun game. If you like the first one, definitely play it. If you like puzzle games, give it a shot. I do actually plan on diving further into this series now. I kind of have an itch to play some more Lolo games. Unfortunately, a lot of those are probably going to have to be done on emulation because I don't have an MSX um, and I don't have a Famicom disk system. But uh, yeah, check them out. It's a cool little series. Thanks for watching. Later.